Hello and welcome to the only show that believes Riz is actually short for Calrissian. I'm Max. I'm Matt. And I'm Luke. And this is Force for Thought. All right. Hello and welcome. So uh, before we get started, uh, I want to make a couple notes about this podcast in general. And if you've been (laughs) listening along, you've probably figured out by now that we usually record these episodes pretty in advance of when these episodes release. Like most podcasts, if you have ever listened to any podcast. (laughs) Correct. So... Sometimes we we, uh, we we talk about the news lately. Don't and break it. Luke makes a big distinction that we're not reporting the news. We're just commenting on it. <laughs> I think he said that <laughs> once and then me and you for some reason have a gripe with it. Mainly you. It was, it was more than once. It was at least twice. I, I still support that distinction. It's important to remember that. But I especially to, because I was trying to give you an out, Luke. <laughs> <clears throat> no, no. I stand by that. Well, this is uh, exactly why Luke says we don't report the news because in our last episode, Literally the one that we just dropped last week, we talked uh, for a good bit about a rumor going around that The Mandalorian Season 4 was going to be a movie. And uh, we said some things that we're probably going to talk about more in a second, probably going to double down on a lot of comments. But I wanted to just say real quick that we're sorry. (laughs) sorry. (laughs) And also Luke, Luke, two weeks ago, Luke was like, I don't want to talk about The Mandalorian Season for being a movie, that's never going to happen. Yep. And then I was Egg like, no, we should face. talk about it. <laughs> if Max didn't have that fire Riz joke, I wanted to start the podcast with Luke Skywalker saying, amazing, every word of what you just said <laughs> is wrong. So, well, all right, all right, let's get into it then. So, we said some comments last week. Um, I said that it was the dumbest thing I'd ever heard in my life. That do they you might stand make. by that comment? Mm, yes, in a way, because so I said, like it, I said it about the rumor yeah. that they would make the And you're next excited season. about it, presumably, though. Of course it's I'm like, excited yeah, exactly. about it. That's the downside. It's <laughs> dumb that they're doing it. This just, it reeks of a business decision that had absolutely no creative or story-based impact on, ma- on making this decision. The only thing that I can think of is, again, once again, kind of doubling down on my comments last week and adding one more, is the fact that Pedro Pascal... I don't think really, and he doesn't have much involvement. He's not in the suit. So I'm not totally sure what's going on with him, but I feel like this is going to be like a pivot moment. And I feel like something weird behind the scenes has happened. Like we've talked about with the past couple seasons, right? It feels like season three was kind of split up and it, you put two episodes in Boba Fett. It was like, well, was that because Boba Fett wasn't didn't test well or something? Was that because of another reason? And so I feel like there's a couple things working against Mandalorian. It's because it's like the flagship show two like really stellar seasons and then it just got a little muddy and confusing where it's just like oh it felt like those episodes of Boba Fett could have been in Mando and kind of set that up well but, I've said yeah. that before that mm-hmm. I think the reason it's so muddied is because yes. the Mandalorian is a two season show mm-hmm. seasons one and two tell a distinct story and then they pick up in Boba Fett start undoing certain character development beats and then in season three they had just no story to tell between the Mandalorian and Grogu. And so they follow Bo-Katan along on this journey, Mm -hmm. which I quite liked. A lot of people didn't. And I understand why, because it is a distinct difference between seasons one and two and season three. Absolutely. Just narratively. But I I cannot fathom what kind of story they have in their heads that they're like, this is better not just for like a season three of the Mandalorian, because we didn't really have anything for that. And not even as a season four of the Mandalorian, this Mm -hmm. should be its own movie. It, I, That's my other point. Is I think one again, going back real quick, Patriot Pascal, something with that, presumably scheduling conflicts coming up, and then just because if each episode takes thirty six days, there's eight episodes. It's that's a such that's a long amount of time to film, or even just do voice acting. And then beyond that, I assume that this is going to be the catalyst that really draws these shows together for the New Republic movie. That's the biggest thing I can think of is that they want to be like they want to make a statement, and it makes a lot of sense to bring back this movie back to theaters first, I think, before the Ray movie, right? They want people to go back to the theater and they know they're going to go see Grogu and Mandalorian. I think it's just like, you know, in the time, think of, again, when the sequel trilogy was ending, Mandalorian was starting and people flocked to Mandalorian because it, it, I think, appeased the fans so well where the sequel trilogy, you know, let, even us, right? It's one of our least favorite movies. I think they let that down. So what better way, instead of being like, go back to the movies and see Ray, I think they're going to go back to the movies and see Mando is a much easier sell. Plus, I think it then will lead into the New Republic movie. We obviously need something really big to happen in order to draw Mando and Grogu out from their little hut that we see them in season three. The New Republic movie is the one that Dave Filoni is going to do? Yes. Okay. To tie them all together. Which do you think that mm-hmm. this is going to also tie into the Ray movie? 
No. No, not the Ray movie. This is significantly before. Ray's a six-year-old. Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't know if you guys thought maybe there would be a time jump or something and we would get an idea of what happens to Grogu. I think Filoni is going to want to keep his stuff separate. Or I guess Favreau is doing this too. And also, what a... I don't want to get too off topic or switch topics, but what a better, I don't, I can't think of a better person to do something like this than Favreau just simply because Iron Man. And with that being said, I don't want the implication of an MCU starting or anything either, but I think that Favreau is able to do that job really well as we've seen it. And I think he will take the time and care for that. Um, in, see, the, in the I, big budget movie. I hope that's true because it's a movie, but I don't know why that would make a difference because, um, I feel like for Mandalorian season three, Dave mm-hmm. Filoni wasn't as involved because he was more involved yeah. with uh, doing Ahsoka. And it just felt like John Favreau was kind of phoning in it a little bit more. Like there was just more lows in Mandalorian mm-hmm. season three. And I'm really worried that that's going to carry over into a movie, especially if like what Luke is saying is right where there's really no reason to do it. Yeah. Lucasfilm or Disney or whoever is just looking at the bottom line and saying, look, we need to make money somehow. We need to put this in a theater. Yeah. Can you make a movie? That's, see, and everything he's you're, just like, I mean, it's my show, so yeah. I guess so. I don't know. See, everything you're saying, though, I feel like it, it, it even further implies like, yeah, you're totally right. The lows were low. And I feel like they were like, okay, what do we, because this realistically had to be in development for years. It goes into production, which means. The yeah, pre-production. So what's the timeline on it? it? It all it says was production in 2024, which means it's been written for a long time. It's been casted, which presumably we know the cast. Yeah, anyway. cast yeah. But even but even then, it's like for other characters will be introduced in this movie that we don't know yet. So presumably they have been cast, right? Presumably like concept art has been written up or mocked up, and things decisions have been made. So like everything is being built currently, basically for production. So this has been going on for a while, which is exactly why I still feel like. This started years ago, which is why season three was so muddied, which is why we end where we do, which is where, you know, Mando is happy. And it's just kind of like shoehorned in. Like you said, Luke, it is a two season thing. It could have been a three if they kind of reconstructed it. But instead, they're like, oh, my God, like we don't have enough content or Boba Fett's failing. We Let's put two episodes of Boba, of Mandalorian and Boba Fett. And then let's like rush the third season because ultimately we want to get to this movie at this date. And so I assume we're going to see the 2025 release for the Mando movie. Um, See, that's my concern is that it's not as well fleshed out already as you think it is. Or the movie is already fleshed out, and that's why everything else sucks. Or (laughs) what's what's already fleshed out is just Mandalorian season four, and that's just basically what they're making into the movie. But I wanted to ask you guys that, too, because it also didn't specifically say that. There were previous reports, I think it was before season three came out, where Jon Favreau said that he was already working on season four. Yeah. So do you guys think that this is taking place of season four, or do you think we're still going to see a Mandalorian season four? So it depends on what you mean by, is this taking place of season four? I think this is 100% the same story that Jon Favreau wrote, Mm -hmm. whatever, one, two, three years ago when he said, I'm writing Mandalorian season four. I also still think there will be a Mandalorian season four in another couple years, unless the Mandalorian or Grogu, Grogu's not going to die, but unless the Mandalorian dies, which I wouldn't be that surprised if it happened, or it would at least probably wait until the Dave Filoni movie what, for like a big climax or something with Thrawn maybe. But I, I mean, we've already had an extra season of the Mandalorian that we didn't need. We've already mm-hmm. had an extra two episodes of the Mandalorian in a different show that we didn't need. There's, they're not going to stop the train now. It's not like they're flush with other successes that Disney can pivot to instead of this. Yeah. That's a big impetus of why, the Mandalorian movie is going to be coming because it's so successful and Disney is floundering for any sort of success lately. I also think it'll be a bridge between, I think we, we saw Thrawn, he made it back. I think Thrawn will be the big bad that'll draw Mando out. Um, whether it's not him as a big bad, but him more of an emperor type situation. And, you know, people are going to be hiring him for one reason or another, very much like the original trilogy, I guess. And then I think that's the bridge in order, you know, at, you know, I, I, I guess we could save it for the end too, but like, the little last little line. Also, Dave Filoni's work on Ahsoka season two. It's like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, I know. I fucking, can't believe that they yeah. hadn't announced that yet, and they just kind of tacked it on as yes. a little. Because you can Google footnote. it. There's like nothing. I feel like it's that all wasn't Mando. that big of a surprise, though. I feel That's like it was true. pretty well received by but the fans. It's not surprising, but it's just it needs to be announced, and I would like to have done it with more flash than that. Yes, and so I, the way I see it is the the grand plan, right? Is that Mando is going to introduce the Mando and Grogu movie is going to introduce Thrawn into the into the Star Wars proper universe from a distance how that's affecting him, how that's affecting the world or the universe. And then Ahsoka season two will happen. And then eventually we'll get the 
New Republic movie. So I'm just thinking about this out loud now. Do you think maybe we're getting like a Thrawn trilogy of movies and that Mm. Mandalorian and Grogu is like episode one? That could be. And then Filoni will be the third and they're going to do a second because again... They're just looking for money. Part or one, what? part two. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I, as you say that, I like that because what a, I think Filoni's going to want to do mm-hmm. that justice, and the fact that Favreau's taking on the first one to set it up, which I think he does really well historically, and then Filoni being able to direct, you know, the bigger one, I think will be great. They're, they'll it, also be working very closely together. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm that's sure. A good call, I, you know, and I'm. That's kind of where I am, though. I'm, like, looking for a reason for this to make sense. And if that's what they're <laughs> yes. doing, then, like, okay, maybe that could be cool, right? It's kind of like a Thrawn trilogy, uh, and maybe they'll start kind of marketing it as such or something once they get a little more plans laid for, like, a second movie. Um, but that's – I'm, like, I'm just – why are they doing this? That's the thing that I, I don't know. Like, they're announcing it, and my, my fear is that they're just going to make whatever – idea they have for Mandalorian season four into a movie. We're going to go see it. We're, we're going to like it. Like, I don't think it's going to be bad. Like I liked Mandalorian seasons one through three, knock on yep. wood. Maybe this episode won't age as well either, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, I have a feeling that we're going to like it, but my fear is that we're going to come out of it just like, okay, like that didn't need to be a movie. Yeah. Like they definitely wanted me to pay to see that, but like that definitely could have been Mandalorian season four because yeah. the Mandalorian raises so many questions now that they could tackle right a thrawn is back into the yep. universe uh star wars universe proper um are they going to address that b are they going to address like the refounding of mandalore and kind of the two different factions that are starting it mm-hmm. uh, are they going to have any dispute over why it ended the first time are we going to get any sort of like night um night watch death watch death watch thank you death watch content because mm-hmm. we believe that's where mandalorian's faction comes from uh, the armorer has the death watch horns on her helmet is it going to dive into that or are they going to handle some of what I consider to be like the existential questions raised by the Mandalorian and Grogu's relationship, which is the fact that Grogu is going to live for hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah. And Mandalorian, I love Pedro, but I mean, he's over the hill. He's only going to survive mm-hmm. maybe another 30 or 40 in the universe before yeah. he would die of old age. So and also are Mando's... we going to see the death of Mando? I yeah. don't think so. At some but point. Like, I think we will in one of these two movies. I agree. Because like you said, I don't, Mandalorian, I don't see him dying of old age, right? But if he does die in one of the two movies, it's mm-hmm. going to be the Filoni movie, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It's going to be the trilogy, Thrawn, because, I mean, we've seen the sequel trilogy, so we know that the galaxy has to get to that point. Mm-hmm. So maybe Thrawn comes back, he asserts himself as a dominant force, and he takes out some key players, such as Ahsoka and Mandalorian and mm-hmm. all of them. But that would be in the second movie. So again, it's like, what's going to happen in this first movie? If we, it's just a buildup for the trilogy, then it, they need to start marketing it as such and letting us know, like, hey, we got big plans for Thrawn. We're doing basically a trilogy. Maybe they just don't want to come out and say they're doing a trilogy because yeah. I think they've already announced multiple trilogies in the past that never worked exactly. out. So the What you just said about taking out key players like Ahsoka and the Mandalorian, didn't Jaren get such a hero's treatment for having such a relatively small role to play mm-hmm. in the galaxy? Like That is such recognition by us. Ahsoka is a legacy character, spans different eras, The one of the last Jedi Masters, and Din Djarin, I mean, what what has he done in terms of the galaxy? He helped reclaim Mandalore, but he was like, what, third in line for actually contributing to that process behind Bo-Katan and the armor? He's like the daredevil of, right? Well, he's yeah, just the main yeah. character for our eyes, but in terms yeah. of the galaxy, he is not on anyone's minds. Well, exactly, which is why I think it'd be so, because he is like the Boba Fett. Like, if Vader is Thrawn, right? If Thrawn is Vader character, I mean, mm-hmm. Mando could be the Boba Fett-esque character. Again, why he needs i mean he's obviously like very good so why would he be bad and but like again like i i don't know like again imagine what thrawn and grogu would be like or his interest in grogu if if thrawn is in that universe i think that would be interesting to see um and then you have to factor in again i think that's his key component is that he is the protector of grogu and so so grogu's gonna be the main factor in this it I mean, is called the mandalorian and grogu i is mean it called that is that the title i wanted to talk about that I what do you guys say, think of that as a name that's pro- I, assume, I don't know i mean i would say it's a temp name but like the show is called the mandalorian it's mm-hmm. obviously <laughs> the mandalorian grogu feels like the movie of that it's like oh yeah now it's gone beyond what we have started with also i mean take what it take everything that we say with a grain of salt because we were so s- hilariously wrong last week but i believe that this is such a vain business move that the higher-ups at disney were 
pulling at their collars like, we got a girl making the next movie? That didn't go well with the Marvels, and now all of Marvel's <laughs> dead. And so they were like, let's get let's get the dudes in here. Let's make the Mandalorian. The bros. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> we're, going back, we're going back to the 90s. <laughs> to be fair, Johnny. <laughs> Marvel, Marvel felt like it was dying slow. I just watched Love and, Love and Thunder. What a I've never even seen that one. Man. Yet. I liked it. Did not enjoy really. Yeah. I like enjoyed certain parts of it, but man, yeah. overall I was just like everything is a joke every two seconds. I'm like, oh yeah, my a god. A lot of the humor didn't As land. somebody who consistently interjects in this podcast stupid <laughs> jokes every two seconds, <laughs> that was too much for me. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, like even when much. Peter Quill is saying his or uh Peter Quill and uh Thor are saying their goodbyes to each other, and it's like Peter Quill looking beyond his shoulder to see the people that he really likes. He's like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. There's like not one, there's only one heartfelt moment in the entire movie yeah. at the end. You excited for that to be a Star Wars movie now with Taika Waititi? It's not. <laughs> we're never getting that movie. <laughs> no, we're never getting We talk about that. Next week, we have to drop another emergency episode because Taika Waititi's movie is announced. <laughs> uh, the date uh, is announced. No, the, the Taika Waititi date. movie will not get an emergency episode treatment unless it literally drops in a week without any sort of trailers or announcements or news with the years leading up to it straight to streaming we are pretty confident that this is going to be a uh theatrical release right did they say that yeah it's going to the Mm -hmm. the big screen it did okay yeah that'd be crazy if it was like it's going to the big screen but it's like just a movie like in theory just like a straight to streaming (laughs) i don't know honestly that would almost make more sense if they were just like oh but it's just like a straight to streaming adventure like it's basically just a Mm -hmm. prolonged mandalorian episode again in theory that would make more again i'm excited to see you already have an established they're doing something smart and they already have an established ip to go to the movies which is something that was like kind of new right it's like Usually it's like, oh, here's Batman. You can go see this Batman movie. It can be a completely new version of it. But this is like, no, we have these characters ingrained in us already. So now they're making a movie. It's like almost doing the opposite of what we usually do with IPs, which is you start something and you just consistently beat it to death, right? New Friday the 13th, new Halloween movie. This is like, oh, no, we already have this TV show characters. Let's it's like let's make Succession the movie. It's like, oh, yeah, I love those characters. You know, it's like that um, yeah, for such a, an expansive galaxy, the creators are so scared to do anything mm-hmm. new or different, and it's so frustrating because, like, the the standalone movies, like Rogue One, like, oh, we're going to make a movie about the 10 seconds before A New Hope because that's familiar to everyone, and Solo, mm-hmm. we'll make a movie about Han Solo. It's like, yeah, I like those movies, and I guess you're sort of being proven right that people will go see them, but I really believe that people would go see more original stuff too like the mandalorian succeeded in 2019 as an original Mm. thing and now instead of taking the lesson like oh if we invest in good story and good creators and tell an original story people will like it it's like oh we got lucky with the mandalorian we gotta keep going with this for all time i disagree with what both of you guys are saying though i think solo in particular was a really good example that you can't just slap an iconic character and star wars on a title and just expect people to show up. Well, that's true. Cause it and I think that's well. what this yeah. is doing. Yeah. Like I, I, I think the, the solos, the a story movie. <laughs> I, I think Luke, I think you're probably accurate in reading the room where they're probably like, uh, like the Marvels wasn't that great. Our next one's going to be, uh, a, a, a Ray movie directed by a woman. Like, yeah, that probably does scare them a little bit, but that's not the problem that they have. The problem that they have is that they're just not telling stories that necessitate us paying money to go to the movie. And that's what the Mandalorian needs to be. It doesn't, it doesn't matter uh, who's directing it or anything like that. It just needs to be an event. And if all it is is just Mandalorian Season 4, then it's not going to do well because people are going to go and they're going to be like, yeah, it was fun, but... It, it wasn't it, a couple episodes of Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then people are going to be like, okay, well, I'll just wait for it to go on Disney Plus then. Do you think we're going to get, story-wise, do you think we're going to get any sort of Ahsoka in the Mando and Grogu movie? I hope not. Let me caveat that. But do you think that's going to bridge that and the Ahsoka Season 2? I kind of think that's interesting. I, is Ahsoka season two? You think coming out after this movie? Yes, I would assume, and most definitely. That's I don't. True. I don't think it'll bridge much of Ahsoka season two because I think Ahsoka season two will be pretty contained with Peridia mm-hmm. and, oh, I guess Thrawn and Ezra and Hera. But that has nothing to do with the Mandalorian with Din Djarin. Like his story is completely independent from Thrawn and Ezra and Hera. He never met Hera. He mm-hmm. barely interacted with the New Republic. Literally just Carson Teva. And that's what. That's what the. Do you think Carson Taver is going to be the the bind between them? Because I I don't He's know. He's got to be. There's no one else to be. Yeah. I don't. I'm not sure that's going to happen. Mm. I don't know if it's necessary, but I feel like if they're like, hey, we are gathering the the troops because Ahsoka's gone now. Like, is he going to be someone they would call? I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't think so. And I kind of hope it's a standalone thing. 
But at the same time, it's like, what's a better call to action to get Mando out of that, out of his little world than like, hey, by the way, Thrawn's back, Ahsoka's gone, we need help. I don't know who we yeah. are, but I like, hope it's not a standalone thing in the sense that I do want it to deal with the repercussions of Ahsoka. I, I do think, think okay, that Thrawn yeah. should be a big part of it. But mm-hmm. as far as like Ahsoka showing up in it, the only reason I say I don't know mm-hmm. is because um, uh, oh, I'm forgetting the actor's name now who passed away. Stevenson, Ray, Ray Stevenson. Stevenson. Yeah. I feel like his death threw a wrench in a lot of things. Yeah. I feel like if there is some sort of Ahsoka content in this movie, it would 100% have to be something addressing that or mm-hmm. resolving that because I don't think Dave Filoni set out Ahsoka season one clearly with a story in mind for this character, but having that story being, oh, and then we're going to go back, grab mm-hmm. Mandalorian, he's going to deus ex machina something up, oh, who knows. So I, I only say that there's... a small possibility because of that. Otherwise, I would say, the, no, it's not going to involve a soak. I hope not. My my biggest thing, which is our whole biggest thing, I think, because to me, it's like, I don't mind going to the movie theater to see a Mandalorian. The dumbest thing is just like, well, it's a show. So what we've talked about last week, I believe too, it's like, okay, so like in 10 years from now, when no one has anybody, any context, just say like, when I show, when we show our 10 year olds, I guess, all through, all, when we show our 10 year olds, <laughs> um, we'll have to be like, okay, so you have to watch Mandalorian seasons one and two, and then a couple episodes of Book of Boa Fett. And then you have to go back and watch Mandalorian season three. And then there's a movie. But then it's like, are they going to be like, oh, then and you then have to watch Ahsoka. Season four, and then maybe it goes back to the Filoni movie. It's and so two seasons of Ahsoka that, somewhere. I feel like yeah. six, movies in a, six seasons in a movie. I don't think we're going to get Mandalorian season four. I think this is the cap, right? You can't go back to TV. It's like, that's like moving out and going back with your parents. Moving back in with your parents. It's like, I think the movie is the gold standard. Like, they'll be in the new Republic movie, I do not think we're getting a Mando season four. No, um, I agree. I, if, if you go back and listen to some of our older episodes where we t- uh, review season three of Mandalorian that I did say that I said mm-hmm. that I was confident that we were going to get a season four of Mandalorian, but that I wish that we didn't because yeah. I feel like Luke, you were saying seasons one and two told such a nice, concise story of the Mandalorian. And it, w- it wasn't that concise. It's just so much more concise. I mean, there were still a lot of filler episodes yeah. and it wasn't that. <laughs> and it was only 16 episodes of what you're talking about. <laughs> right. It's 16 episodes and there was like maybe five episodes worth of actually Din mm-hmm. Djarin reuniting Grogu with Luke Skywalker, which overall sure. is the story of those two seasons. But, but mm-hmm. then it, it does, I think to what you were trying to say, though, it does kind of get a little sloppy where then it goes into Boca Boba Fett where they kind of undo some of it. And then season three of Mandalorian just picks up and you'd be completely lost if you're just going straight from season two to three. But at least at the end of season three of The Mandalorian, I felt like it was a really good bookend to their story where he, I guess, as officially as possible, adopted Rogu as his mm-hmm. own child. And I said at the end, I don't know where you go from there. I don't want to see a season four of just like him doing random jobs for the New Republic, which is what they were clearly setting up. So I I guess the silver lining to this is that hopefully they don't come back to a Mandalorian season four. Hopefully they just leave good enough alone. They say Mandalorian, that's a good TV show. You can watch those three seasons and enjoy it. Um, And then they can, they can take Mandalorian off into the movie world. It makes That's basically the same conversation we were having at the end of season two of Mandalorian though, that it was a perfect end to their story. And it's like, you don't need a season three. If they do one, they could probably make it work. And it's arguable whether they did or not. But after season three, again, their story is concluded and we don't need any more. Now we're going to get a movie. And I bet at the end of this movie, it's going to be like, all right, well now that's a good stopping point and we don't need any more, but I Mm -hmm. I bet they can make something work if they need it. (laughs) Big Bob Iger is going to be like, we need to make it work. That's exactly what I'm afraid of. We're going to watch it and everyone's going to be like, okay, that was good. Please stop. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Because no. I think at the end of season two, even the Mandalorian episodes, the Boba Gabo Boba Fett Mando episodes would be a blast if we didn't get a season three because it tied up their show, I guess, right? Whatever. Or it'd be even better if it was like a special um, because then it's like, I almost like the idea of Grogu and Mando being out there in the you know galaxy doing whatever versus knowing now, like the uh, only thing I'm thinking about is like they have to get out of their home now. And it's like, man, that's such a bummer. Like, it's so much cooler. They were just going, doing cool missions and stuff, too. Now that you've seen their home, you know, in the back of their head, they're like, man, I just want to go back home. Well, yeah. Or or maybe they maybe they are still doing going out and doing missions, but that's just their home base. I mean, we don't know. It didn't seem like he was really taking jobs on. So, yeah, kind of how he would take jobs with his uh, N1 Starfighter, though. He's got to get the Razor Crest back. What do you mean back? It's blown up. He's just got to build a new one. <laughs> he's got, yeah, he's got to get a new ship. He's got to do some bounty hunting. That How's was, he going to do bounty hunting in an N1? The N1 is so cool, but one of the biggest mistakes I think that they did is blow up the Razor Crest. 
Yeah, Such a I cool ship. They did that. I remember thinking in the sequel trilogy before The Force Awakens mm-hmm. came out, like I, I thought Han Solo was going to die because Harrison Ford hates Star Wars and it's time for the character. And I remember did thinking it that? would be so cool if he like went out and sacrificed himself with the Millennium Falcon. Mm-hmm. And then what, what we got was pretty cool. But looking back, it's like they're not getting rid of the Millennium Falcon, even if it yeah. means that it's just sort of in the hands of Ray, I guess, yeah. or Chewbacca or Poe or just whoever's around and mm-hmm. doesn't really make sense. Like Who's marketing and business yeah. wise. Yeah. But um, did you see also that Adam Driver um, interview when he, I think, I don't know when it was obviously for Ferrari or whatever, but he was talking about how Harrison Ford loves Star Wars and everything. He said he likes it more yeah. than anyone thinks yeah. he does. Which makes me, me happy. happy yeah, same. I did not hear that. That's wonderful. Yeah. You said it was like uh, gleeful, I think, on set, right, and stuff. So how could you not? Maybe that's just because he knew he was dying, though. (laughs) Was was that his attitude on the set of episode nine or episode seven? I don't know. Is it like someone in their last week of high school being like, you know, I think he liked high school, but it's like, (laughs) no, no, it's just this week. Yeah. (laughs) No, I think I think you have to you have to enjoy Star. I think what would annoy me or probably annoys him is that he's been in a million other things, and people just want to talk to him about Indiana Jones and Star Wars, right? And he's been in some great things. I mean, he's Jack Ryan and like the fugitive and stuff and, and uh, Air Force One. Like he's other going to be in a Marvel movie, which I still don't understand how they got Harrison Ford and why he agreed to do a Marvel movie. I don't I know. know. Either. That seems that. so <laughs> unlike him. I would say the same thing about Robert Redford, except he went in during Civil War and it killed. And, and it was his I, last role, too, wasn't it? I don't know. He retired? No, I think no, he was. A, he died, didn't he? Robert, yeah, Robert Redford? He was still alive. Who are you thinking of? Uh, must be thinking of someone else. Mm. Um, um, you think of the last guy that played the Harrison Ford role? Sure, surely we'll cut this. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I don't know. You tell me, Maxwell. You're editing this episode. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If we sound stupid, if <laughs> I hope Max is getting his vindictive revenge on Matt and editing in like booze over everything that he says. <laughs> I don't make myself sound better if that helps. <laughs> right, I'm thinking of someone else. Yes, Robert Redford is very much alive. He is indeed one of the best actors of all time. Um, but then he came in at, at like a great point in, in that universe. And I feel like Harrison Ford's like, <laughs> he's just like, he just wants to kill like everything. Maybe to kill Indiana <laughs> Jones, kill Han Solo. Let's kill the MCU. Spoiler for Indiana Jones he, five. No, he doesn't die in Indiana Jones five. Spoiler again. No, no. He gets reunited with his wife. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't know what to think. Cause I actually still haven't seen it. And it's on streaming. It's I like it. Give it a watch. I think. I haven't seen any of them. Phoebe, uh, Phoebe I think Waller I saw Bridge the fourth one in great. theaters, but that was what, 2006? Who does? Yeah. That yep. was nine. Yeah. And that's yeah. The, by, obviously by far the worst one, but the new one's good. I like her. I like uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge a lot, and it's like, she's all three, so. I like you know, all it, three. Oh, wow. I've never thought about that, how it kind of reconnects them, even though they've never shared a screen. She shared a screen with the character that he plays. That's crazy. Oh, that is interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. I don't know where we were before this so conversation. Anyway, we, somehow, <laughs> we somehow got there from the Razor Crest. Yeah. I we were talking about the Razor Crest, but to go back to that, because I also wanted to say that I very much agree. I felt like they did a great job of making the Razor Crest an iconic ship in a very short amount of time. Yes. And oh, yeah, because so then we talked about the Millennium Falcon. Just every yeah. time you were in that ship, you're like, oh, that's so cool. What's like the, the structure vacuum, of this? You're like, yeah. oh, there's a bathroom. Yeah. Um, I don't know why, but I was glad to learn that. A carbon yeah. freezing chamber. That makes so much sense for bounty hunting. Yes, yeah. it does. Yep. There's a lot in that ship to explore. And I feel like it's so tall. We're missing like a level that we haven't we've never seen before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we'll never see it again. Story wise for this Mandalorian movie, they got to make it personal somehow for the Mandalorian for Din Djarin and Grogu because like I said before, they are not that renowned in the Star Wars galaxy. It's not like Thrawn comes back and the mm-hmm. New Republic's like, call Din Djarin, he'll help. They they do not know no. this guy exists. I'm thinking maybe it's personal well, in Carson some way. Carson Teva does. Yeah. Carson Teva does. And but Zeb. D- oh, man, I was waiting <laughs> to get Zeb? in there. What, what was well, that? No, he Zeb doesn't, but he knows Carson Teva. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if we're going seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, here, yeah. right? and then I think, think that is in the realm of being strange. Okay, and each Zeb, other. tell Hera. me, Hera knows yes. um, on Mothma. Tell me so yeah, if uh, Carson wasn't like you ever see Boba Fett? Now imagine him but shiny. <laughs> <laughs> is Boba Fett that famous in the if, to them? No, he was barely famous in the original trilogy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's just a character that's on the screen a lot for us, and we, as the audience, think is neat, but in universe, they are not players in this f- scenario. What if in part of their story, they do have to like go back to Luke and be like, hey, I know like I stole your Padawan, but there's this threat, Luke, we kind of need you uh, to come help us. And somehow in that story, he finds out that Boba Fett's alive. He's like, wait, what? That guy came back? He's like, oh, yeah, he's, he's on Tatooine right now. He's doing real well for himself. Tatooine? <laughs> <laughs> My home? <laughs> that's where I left him. I think that that story is just not worth 
the headache of actually doing it. Like, because it, it would have Boba Fett and Luke interacting or hearing oh, about no, each other. I, I again. see that yeah. tongue in cheek. I mean, like, maybe that would be like a funny like thing to include in like a book or a comic or something. But we he, don't, maybe we don't need that Luke beat. throws him a blaster because <laughs> he because he, he chopped his him a little nod of approval. Like, hey, <laughs> yeah. we're cool now. <laughs> yep. Oh, um, I owe you one. I've been trying to say this for a while. The it, it should be uh, something personal to bring in Din Djarin and Grogu. The theory I have off the top of my head, which we're years out from this movie. I don't know if Thrawn will be in it. I don't know if it'll tie into Ahsoka at all, but maybe something Balin Skull is doing or something that Thrawn is bringing into the galaxy is like trying to, we've theorized that Balin Skull's mission is to like destroy the force and something along those lines. Maybe it's like a X2 X-Men United kind of story where they start like killing all the force users by like killing the force in the galaxy. And then Din Djarin is like, yo, Grogu's sick. I got to go get involved with this. That no, would make sense. Good. But if, Hera just shows up mm-hmm. at that home front and is like, Din Djarin, we need you. I'm going to roll my eyes. Same. I'll probably love it, to be fair, and I'll probably pump my fist, yeah. but it's got to make, you got to make it personal somehow. They are not famous in this well, maybe, situation. I think maybe they you also could have used uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 as an example where Rocket got sick. And then there could also be the exact same beat where as Grogu is dying, somebody says, this was your story all along. <laughs> yeah, that would work. <laughs> <laughs> People would be like, yeah, that's true. I'm just hoping for some more grief carga action. Really? No. I think you're the only one. <laughs> Nobody is. It's that's the thing, is that I think Mandalorian, it's like you said, it has to be personal, and obviously what you just said it makes the most sense because we have no other connections to them. Grief Karga, who cares? Uh, you know, Carson, it's like, okay, he's a cool random other character. Yeah. Um, mm. I can't even remember Gina Carano's character now. Cara Dune. Cara oh Dune. I, I mentioned that before, the disparity between season two and season three. Mm-hmm. Like the, the story's over and then season three starts. It's like, oh, Grogu's back with Mandalorian. Grief Karga's a mayor. Cara Dune is gone. It's like a completely different show all of a sudden. Because yeah. I feel like they should have just picked up on the bridge that would have been badass like just picked up on the bridge of that ship oh yeah and moff gideon escaped from new republic custody yeah yes yeah, they exactly really overlooked that whole they overlooked line. over they looked overlooked everything in that and we just started with a new show luke you're 1000 percent right but you don't need to convince me we already gave it kind of a scathing review you're the one who liked it <laughs> that's true i mean the new show we got was also great yeah <laughs> it's just different yeah i just hope for more lizzo yeah, this will be her comeback. This will be this will be her comeback. <laughs> they're gonna bring back Gina Carano. Um, <laughs> I mean, there was a Frog Lady episode in season two that everyone no. liked, and now no, that no one liked that. it. Oh, that was oh, Frog Lady was cool. It's everyone's least favorite episode. I'm trying to think. She turned now. into a quadruped to sprint. You, <laughs> you love that fact. You love it. <laughs> it's you, so neat. You love good world building ver- via various species. I do, and that's why I like the Luzo and Jack Black planet also. It's the first time we've seen Bay 2 super battle droids outside of the prequels and that was all that cool. stuff with the droids and um, the old guy that I'm sure Matt likes. What's his name? <laughs> I, 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 the I actor, do. The, the guy from Back to the Future. Yeah, Doc Brown. Um, Christopher Lloyd. Mr. Plum in the Clue movie, one of my favorites Ooh. as well. Um, yeah, all that stuff was really cool and all the lore with, the Man- with Mandalore and the armor and Bo-Katan. Season three, of the Mandalorian was great. Besides the writing, <laughs> when it, when, when we do, because I'm thinking about the Christopher such Lloyd a massive asterisk. Yeah, it should because I, I keep thinking of the Lizzo. No, no, it's not. That's very fair. Real yes. quick, keep your thought. I'm going to defend that because the writing in the prequels is horrible too, and everyone loves the prequels. I will defend the prequels, but the writing is terrible. Mm, that's fair. That mm-hmm. is the same. Keep this in mind for our force for thought later. Go ahead, Matt. That is true. Mm. No, I was well. After that, I was just going to say there's probably there's a million lines, but. Um, in the prequel trilogy, but the in the Lizzo and Christopher Lloyd scene when he's he's like one maybe he's like oh can you forgive me she's like maybe one day but not now he's like okay and then walks away it's like fair that, enough it's like that kind of writing is like what the fuck was that why do I have to see that who cares I can see why you'd think that wouldn't be a cool scene but they were also playing croquet with some <laughs> yeah. little bug things that were alive and that mm-hmm. was neat so um, good episode did you see also I sent you guys this um. Uh, Mark Hamill met Natalie Portman for the first time. Apparently, that's crazy yeah, to me the that they. Globe. That was the like, first time. I don't believe that's that. That's what he said. He's like, I finally met my mother. 
No, there's. The, I don't believe I it. Was the caption. It was the caption. I don't believe it. We'll the, have to bring Mark Hamill on the pod. Yeah, for, yeah. yeah. As the, we'll be able to get that. As the second guest ever on this podcast, we'll have Sway and Mark Hamill. <laughs> we, we haven't been able to get on John Jackson Miller, despite having two of the three of us having autographs from him, but... <laughs> Surely we'll get Mark Hamill up here. John Jackson Miller posted a video today of walking through the snow talking about how three months from now living force will come out. Why are we giving him a plug? And uh, we like John Jackson. Yeah, Miller. No, we do. We do. And uh, he held up the poster. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I should have an autographed copy of that. <laughs> I wouldn't know where to put it. I don't have enough room right now. Uh, uh, I haven't responded yet, but I made a TikTok the other day of um, it was a I pulled it from our episode. Hopefully it's not trashing on Kiati Mundi. Okay. And someone re- responded that Kiati Mundi is not the worst design in Star Wars, but Yarol Poof is. And I can't believe someone would say that. He looks so cool. <laughs> and not that. I don't know. Good, about cool. Good because <laughs> old is a good argument, but mm-hmm. he was like the first CG Jedi. He's the only CG Jedi in the Phantom Menace. He is really neat. I. I don't know. Like, how do you define cool? Because if it's just like you can be the sweetest peach on a tree, but some people don't like peaches kind of thing, then whatever. But he's a high effort character. He's got four arms. He's I will tell you this. I think I do think of Keanu Mundi as like when I think of the the prequel trilogy, I think of Kit Fisto, Plo Koon and Keanu Mundi. So I feel like Keanu Mundi is that, that weird. It's just because of the amount of screen time. That's not fair. It's true. But I'm just all I'm saying is I think of Keanu Mundi. Caddy Mooney doesn't give me any sort of thoughts. Every time I see your old poof on screen, I'm just like, man, I would love to see him get decapitated. <laughs> it would just be so satisfying. It would be. Um, I feel like there's like a million other things to talk about in Mando and Grogu oh, movie. Yeah, I, I wanted I to say, do we think this movie is actually coming out? Because yes. we've talked before about how Star Wars really announces a lot yeah. of movies before they actually come a thing. And while this one does have more credibility, it seems, than most movie announcements we hear, there's still the part of me in the back of my head. It's like, is it though? Is this yeah. going to be a movie? Yeah, I think it definitely is. It's, it's going to go into production. It's not like it's being written. It's like, no, things are scheduled. People are, you know, I feel like they, honestly, I think they would have announced this earlier if it wasn't for the writer strike, I think too, to be honest. Um, mm. So I feel like this is coming out of kind of nowhere, but I feel like it really realistically would have happened three months ago or so. Um, and I, yeah, I do think it's going to happen. The statement, though, I felt like was the most generic thing. And part of me was like, did anybody actually talk to Kathleen Kennedy and John Favreau? Or did they just like type this up and put their names on it? <laughs> I was wondering the same thing about the art that was with the, yeah. the announcement. Yeah, was that too. AI art? I don't know if it was AI or if it was so. like concept art from season three or something like that. But I was like, what is this art that I'm looking at? Like, it was just, yeah, yeah like it was like a generic picture of them, like jumping from an exploding ship or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, like, I would. I mean, hey, you know what? We could be stupid because honestly, now I'm gonna. We should like analyze that art a little bit more. I'm sure there are people, other people will. I'm sure there's gonna be things like, oh, this ship. I mean, you guys would probably know honestly better than anybody, maybe. But like, I feel like, oh, this ship could have been in this and this and that, and this could imply that. So I feel like in a couple of weeks, we could realistically have a new. I don't think it is though, because I. It, like I'm you said, sure. Like, I'm sure like it's just kind season of a three. Hazard <laughs> announcement where like someone like the intern was just told like, hey, go uh, go post this on our Instagram account or whatever. And he's like, mm. Mm, okay, guess I got to make a picture for this then. How but, did they yeah. announce it? Was that via Instagram? Yeah, I I almost I assume they you, you know all social media. I I pulled up StarWars.com and it was on there, That's, which I find to be the most credible. Yes, you can yeah. get. That's what I went to after I saw it because it says link in bio for the full story, and the full story is like a paragraph longer than what they said. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's basically, just Star Wars made this post saying that it's coming. Yep, exactly. But yeah, I don't know. It's man, I'm I think it definitely is going to happen again. I don't think there's going to be Mandalorian season four. I think it's going to tie in the Ahsoka's storyline and the fact that I think Thrawn is going to be an empire, nope, sorry, an emperor type character looming in the background and, you know, leading up to us finally being able to uh, get the New Republic. I think Grogu is going to probably be a big um, uh, a, a big thing in it too. Again, the, the cloning thing I think is going to finally come back into it and I think really? Thrawn's going to be very interested in that. Yeah, I don't know. He's got his army. Is he going to, is it just an army of, is an army of Jedi? Does he need Metaclorians? I don't know. Does did he does he need the fort? Does he does he need something from Grogu? I don't know. Which then would also bring in bigger stakes for Mandalorian and bring everyone together. We can get the whole Rebels crew plus Mando plus Ahsoka, um, who I guess it would obviously kind of a semi you know part of the, the Rebels crew. But I do agree with that. I I think the uh, cloning story. I hope it still goes somewhere bigger, just because we yep. know that Palpatine was brought back somehow involving cloning. Yeah. So. I feel like because Bad Batch is dealing with cloning and it was 
kind of believe to be a lead into the Moff Gideon storyline, mm-hmm. which is now resolved. I hope they kind of pick that up a little bit where, yeah, maybe like yeah. Thrawn kind of picks up where he left off and he uses like a final contingency to yeah. bring back the Emperor. I hope it has some sort of tie in to the later sequel trilogy era. I would like it to also, but I really doubt it because doubt it Moff too. Gideon's dead. All of his clones assumedly are dead. Dr. Pershing is dead. That that was really what about all the rest of, of that uh, Dark Council or whatever. You think they had anything to do with the cloning, though? I thought they I, knew about it, didn't they? Did they? Uh, I had gathered that, that was like Moff Gideon's, Gideon's own thing. Own thing, yeah. Mm. I couldn't tell. I forget. I need to go back now. That's the it. thing, though. Mandalorian gives you a lot of questions and no answers. <laughs> really, when you even even when they try to, because we were having these questions at the end of season two, like, oh, what about the cloning? And now we've gotten the answers, and we're still talking about because it. Because it's not satisfying. That's the thing. It's just yeah. like <laughs> yeah, because we don't like the answers. Yeah. <laughs> and because there was a lot of theories after Mustache Gate that we were like, oh, but maybe he's alive. <laughs> right oh, mustache yeah. gate was a fun time it was I, that was like our first episode we that was a whole thing yeah uh, i think our first episode was mandalorian season four theories which will not age well although it still might but all, does anybody in that my biggest theory was that it would have nothing to do with the imperial remnant because like what i'm saying now it, that storyline is independent of din Djarin, but they mm-hmm. gotta start tying it together somehow and i would be upset if it doesn't even more so than i was before when we talked about this just because <laughs> that thrawn is back now like matt you said that thrawn needs to be like a looming force and mm-hmm. i hope he's not just looming i hope he's like the main antagonist but again like i said i, I hope it's like a thrawn trilogy basically but. maybe we'll get cad bane too again I feel like in the New Republic movie or in this movie is gonna. I feel like it's gonna tie together everything. We're gonna Cobb Vanth, obviously. I mean, Thrawn's gonna be looking for other blue people, right? I, I would assume so. So these are blue people because <laughs> gotta find Cad Bane. <laughs> Just look at Cad Bane, like, hey, blue pride, my man. <laughs> if Max Rebo comes in, <laughs> <laughs> he's the, also around. I know the Holy Trio right there. <laughs> Thrawn, oh Cad Bane, and Max Rebo. Now I'm thinking, are there any other blue people? Did, did Senator Chuchi die in the Bad Batch? Do you remember? Mm. She was blue. I think she's still alive. Get her. <laughs> blue wars. <laughs> that would be quite the get, though. Well, she's a good guy. I don't know. All right. Any any last thoughts on Mandalorian season four officially being a movie? The Mandalorian and Grogu. One last one. Uh, kind of the counterpoint to you. You you were talked to earlier in the episode about how you know why is this a movie? It's funny because that's the only time we've ever. Usually, we're like, why is this a show? This should be a movie. And I think they might be learning their lesson. And season three was like, this wasn't really fully needed. No, because we keep saying, just stick mm-hmm. to your guns. The Mandalorian worked as a serialized TV show. It did. I always said, I want more of a through mm-hmm. arc. But give them credit. Like, what they set out to make did work. And people yeah. loved it. It was the most successful show. And now they're taking their most successful show, and they're just completely flipping it on its head. Yeah, it's just, and it's I like, gotta, you just got to stick to your guns yeah. or tell us why you're doing this. It's like Poe Dameron said to Ad, Ad, Admiral Holdo, mm-hmm. Vice Admiral Holdo, Vice Admiral Holdo, Amelin. That's why I was confused. <laughs> is her first name. Tell us there's a plan. Mm-hmm. That's the quote I was getting at. Just tell us there's it a is. plan. What, what are you guys doing? Why are you getting in here? Why is this a movie all of a sudden? Mm-hmm. Because like Luke said off the top of this episode, it feels like a business decision and not a creative one. John Favreau said before that he had already started working on Mandalorian season four. Why the sudden pivot? We need answers, and we need to be reassured that they're creative answers. Yeah, I agree. I think, shit, what was I going to say? Again, you said, just get, uh, we've been saying that forever, though. It also, it's just like, give us an actual direction. When the first movie came out, you're like, hey, there's going to be two more of these Star Wars movies. When the prequels came out, there's going to be a new trilogy. When the sequel trilogy came out, there's going to be a new trilogy. We felt weird with Rogue One and Solo. We're like, oh, there's all these movies planned. That's cool. And then all of a sudden, like, they're all gone, and we just got two of them. It's like, okay, well, that was a little weird. But ever since then, it's just been a pile of weirdness when they're retracting things and, and saying things are coming out, and they never do. With that being said, they do mention, like, three movies within that. The Ray movie, obviously, the the, the Mangold movie, um, and then the New Republic movie. So they actually do mention four movies total, including the Mandalorian and Grogu movie. But it's like, stick to it then, mm-hmm. like you said. And also, like you said, Max, it doesn't make any sense... Like we keep talking about, I don't flip flopping because there's part of me that's just like, well, I'd rather have a movie than an unneeded TV show. But then the other part of me is just like, well, then how is any of this cohesive? When you think of Star Wars, you think of three movies, a set of three movies, and then the TV shows are just the TV shows. And now again, you have to watch three seasons and two episodes and now a movie and then another movie and potentially another show to understand it. Because you couldn't just watch Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, and then this movie if Thrawn's a part of it. So you have to watch Ahsoka. And I hate 
I like when things intertwine because it makes things big and epic. But at the same time, it's like, man, I just like, I love Andor because it's Andor and it ties into nothing else, obviously besides Rogue One. But like, it doesn't really tie. You don't need to watch those. Mm-hmm. Like, you, it's not needed. You don't need uh, a prerequisite to watch a movie. I, I maintain that season one of Ahsoka may not be a prerequisite for mm-hmm. this story. Even if Thrawn is a distinct presence, he's just a leader of the Imperial Remnant. And yeah. he wasn't around before. Now he is. That's all you really need to know. You're not going to get into the nitty gritty of Peridia and the Night Sisters, or at least you don't need to for a Mandalorian movie. Yeah, I guess that's, you know, I'm saying that too, but also like we talked about, like, you know, Clone Wars and, and Rebels and stuff. It's like, oh, well, people watching Ahsoka are like, who, why do I care about this? You know, it's like, no, I guess you, you really you don't. You without it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. I think Thank you. from the business perspective, they want to, instead of doing a Mandalorian season four, they just basically want to like do something of a reboot where they're just like, oh, it's just a fresh jumping on point. Like yeah. just do this movie and then this could lead into a second movie and then it'll lead into the Filoni movie mm-hmm. uh, that kind of caps it all off. And yeah, I, I don't think. I think they will write it in such a way that you will be caught up pretty instantly, even if you haven't seen Mandalorian. But I'm sure everyone who's going to see this will have seen it. And a huge upside is that um, instead of week to week Burger King, we'll have a lot cheaper of a meal before a movie. Oh, we're going somewhere nice. We should we're, go somewhere. We're yes. a steak dinner that night. We should go to. Yeah, we should get a steak dinner every time a movie, a Star Wars movie comes we out. Can do it's what great. we did for James Bond Day. Get dressed up in tuxedos and get some nice steaks. That's true. We should yeah, get like I'm a down. really primo steak. <laughs> Nah, Longhorn. Yeah, yeah, what's wrong with the Longhorn? I mean, I guess it's really close to your house, too. Well, super convenient. Yeah, no no one knows what Max was behind the Longhorn. It's <laughs> in the back of it. <laughs> They're going to start looking for you by all the Longhorns. <laughs> Every night at 1130, they throw away the bread. <laughs> <laughs> Best part of the night. And the gristle. And then the <laughs> gristle. <laughs> Um, one more thing we, we've talked before about how the those three movies that they announced at Celebration may or may not be actually coming out and they w- did reference all three of them mm-hmm. just today with this news announcement but still like we're still we're still thinking it's not a good sign that no one believed you when you said these three movies are coming out that no one believed you that all three would come out and now you're announcing a fourth before we've even started production yes. on one of those three like come okay. on <laughs> yep. This is exactly what we've talked about. You're doing it again. <laughs> learn Star Wars. And James learn. Mangold did the the last Indiana Jones movie, which was kind of a flop. And it seems like, again, from a business perspective, they're doing this because they want to drive up some box office revenue mm-hmm. to start seeing some returns on uh, this Lucasfilm investment that Disney made. And yeah, I, I know you can go back and listen to that episode. But I stand by our prediction that the, the Mangold movie is the most likely to never see the light of day. I'm just picturing that board meeting at Disney where they're like, all right, all of our movies did poorly this year. Turn to the toy guy. What sells? And he just holds up a little Grogu toy. He's like this guy. <laughs> and we're like, OK, that's the next movie. We'll make it work. Oh, geez. Yeah, it's. It hurts to laugh at, but I think that's exactly <laughs> what happened. I get that business has to business, and we've talked about it before, that that's why we're not going to get a Kit Fisto comic, even though I think it would be much more interesting than another Mace Windu comic, but there's just some stuff that you could do and just take more risks on creatively than try to do the safe thing, because even take, the safe thing doesn't necessarily work. Take the risk and just stick with it for a little bit. Like The, the problem with, with uh, Star Wars right now is that they are trying to take risks, but they're constantly like giving themselves an out. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like, I feel like they've introduced so many things that they were just like, ah, well that wasn't that well received. So we're just not going to address that again. And it's like, you, you can't keep doing that. Like at some point you are going to have to double down and show us what was Kira doing with Maul after solo or what's Cad Bane and uh, Cobb Vanth doing on Tatooine. Like you, you clearly tease these things. You can't just leave them dormant forever. Yeah. They're working outside, but pressing right up against the box. Yeah. yeah. But we'll see, I think, with the Acolyte and Skeleton crew with the new stories and see where those go. The I'm Acolyte excited. I'm very excited for. That looks original. Yeah, it does. You don't think so about Skeleton crew? We haven't seen anything, really. Oh, I, okay. Yeah, all I know is that it's some kids. I thought that was like a dig at Skeleton crew. No, I oh assume God, no it's, laws, I assume it's the Galactic Empire area, era again. I know absolutely nothing. I just, I just assume yeah. because that's what Star Wars does. They go back to that exact era. It's probably those 15 years between... Revenge of the reason, Sith and A New Hope. I didn't think it was, but I don't know. I hope it's not. I'd rather explore outside of that era, but... I'm going to Google it. Yeah. See. Yeah, I... 
just about any other era, I think would be just interesting, more interesting to explore at this point. And but that, like, that's what I was saying. They're outside, but right up against the box. And now they're exploring the New Republic era. And it's like, but you're trying your absolute hardest to just make it the same era. It's the New Republic era. Okay. Oh, yeah, because it it's in the same. Mm-hmm. It's in the Mandalorian era. Okay. So, again, not quite the same, but trying your hardest <laughs> to make it the same. Anyway, anybody have any force for thought? Yes, I do have a force for thought, actually. Whoa. Um, not Luke so Taylor? <laughs> earlier, I was talking <laughs> about some Taylor? of the bad writing in the prequels, and I wanted to talk about one of those bad lines, uh, because everyone's I'm going to defend character. it, no matter what it is. All right, good. Go on. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> everyone's favorite character, Obi-Wan Kenobi, delivers a pretty scathing remark to Qui-Gon Jinn on Tatooine when they're uh, uh, meeting up to kind of talk about some stuff that's going on. Is and then, why do I feel we've picked up another pathetic life form? Yes. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. That is a scathing remark. I've Obi-Wan about that Kenobi tells too. Qui-Gon Jinn while on Tatooine, and while Obi-Wan knows that he's dealing with a slave boy, why do I sense we've picked up another pathetic life form? Because fuck Jar Jar. <laughs> but that's the thing, though. Mm-hmm. At this point in their adventure, they had picked up Jar Jar, and that that's clearly who that jab was like supposed to be at but like they also picked up the literal queen of naboo her handmaidens a royal guard pilots it's like i think picked up a lot of life forms here buddy why are you so hung up on the i'm gonna defend this as well i'm trying to think was captain panaka right there too was was it overheard by him (sighs) (laughs) that's funny um i don't know i need to go back i don't know if that was like in front of obi-wan's whole thing is he's an old grumpy man before he's old i think as well so i feel like it makes sense he likes to travel light he likes to travel and more of a duo i think it makes yeah, sense he's crotchety and snarky sometimes to a fault you know <laughs> sometimes that's a, to a fault but that's like you're excusing racism right now like he's basically whoa, racist against jar jar because the very first thing he says when jar jar pops up in front of him is what's this yeah, okay, that's that's a person true. dude that is a sentient being you know what you're right i'm off the obi-wan train He's getting the Ki- Kiati Mundi trip. No, <laughs> no. It's the same, Max. It's like when we, uh, us in college. You're Qui-Gon. We're the more the merrier. And I'm like Obi-Wan. We're like, I think we're fine with five. <laughs> like, you know, you remember? That's, that, that's totally different, though, than saying, why do I sense we've picked up another pathetic life form? Not even like life form. Like, even that seems derogatory, doesn't it? And then to say, mm-hmm. like, assume that it's pathetic. And then Qui-Gon's no, like, it's it. the boy. And Obi-Wan at no point is like, oh, geez, sorry about that. And he's just like, hmm. Not okay. that we see. That could be deleted scene. We don't know. Remember in uh, and also, Attack of the Clones when yeah. Anakin gets taken out to be executed with Obi-Wan? And he's like, I transmitted your message just as you requested, Master. Then we decided to come and rescue you. And Obi-Wan just rolls his eyes and says, good job. <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> I'm hey, off the Obi-Wan hype train. No. Well, on I, it. He was, I think, no. That line is more that excusable. That is quite because possibly the last word he will say you. to Anakin. <laughs> he said, and then we came to rescue you as they're being chained up. So it's like. You think it's sincere? No, I'm saying like he's being sarcastic, but it's like, oh, like good job rescuing me. You know, like, I don't know. There's a little more. Well, he does say it pretty scathing in that moment, too. (laughs) But I don't know. I feel like that's a little more lighthearted of a comment than this. This just seems totally out of pocket. Go be one. Yeah, it's it's vicious. I agree. It's rude. (laughs) That's some good force for thought. That that makes me tilt my head and go, huh? I get it. So anyway, let us know uh, what you think. Let us know if you think Obi-Wan is a jerk. No, just kidding. Don't do that. But let us know what you think about the Mandalorian movie, the Mandalorian and the Grogu. If you're excited for it, what you want it to be about, any other predictions that you might have, you can reach out to us on social media um, at Force for Thought. Yeah. See you, Sammy.